hell in the book of Enoch, the book of Enoch chapter 22. And from there I went to another place, and he showed me in the west a large and high mountain, and an hard rock, and four beautiful places. The hard rock could be a cave within the mountain, where the four beautiful places would be. Hell is described as being in the earth, and in the foundation of the mountains, the foundations being under the earth. See Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 22. Hell is deep on the ground. The book of Job chapter 11 and verse 8. The direction of Hell is down. Psalm 55 and verse 15. Ezekiel chapter 32 and verse 21 and 27. Hell is low. Psalm 86 and verse 13. Hell is beneath us. Proverbs chapter 15 and verse 24, Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 9, L is a pit, Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 15, Ezekiel chapter 31 and verse 16. People can dig into L, Amos chapter 9 and verse 2, L is the grave. And inside it was deep, wide, and very smooth. How smooth is that which rolls, and deep, and dark to look at? Then Raphael, one of the only angels who was with me, answered me, and said to me, These beautiful places are there, so that the spirits of the souls of the righteous and the unrighteous dead might be gathered into them, for them... They were created so that ere they might gather the souls of the sons of men. And these places they made where they will keep them until the day of judgment and until their appointed time. And that appointed time will be long until the great day of judgment. The judgment seat of Christ comes upon them, the righteous and the unrighteous. The first letter of Peter, chapter 4 and verse 17. For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begins at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? And if the righteous is being saved with difficulty, where will the ungodly and the sinner make a showing? 2 Corinthians, chapter 5 and verse 10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that every one may receive the things done in his body according to that he has done, whether it be good or bad. The Book of Enoch, chapter 22 and verse 5. And I saw the soul of a dead man making suit, and his voice went forth to heaven and made suit. The slain soul in figure cried for vengeance the soul of a dead man was not and is not an immortal soul had this been so it would have been symbolized as alive and not as a dead man slain the book of enoch chapter 22 and verse 6 then i asked raphael the angel who was with me and said to him whose spirit is that the voice of which reaches to heaven and complains. And he answered me and said to me, saying, This spirit is the one that came out of Abel, whom Cain his brother killed, and he will complain about him until his offspring, the seed of Cain, the seed of the serpent, are destroyed from the face of the earth and from amongst the offspring of men. His offspring perish. The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. Genesis chapter 4 and verse 10. So God said to Cain concerning the slain soul of Abel, his brother. This was a cry for vengeance upon Cain. So in this symbolic prophecy. It is a principle in the scriptures that the life, the soul of the flesh is in the blood. Leviticus chapter 17 and verse 11. By personification, a slain person's blood is said to cry or speak. 
Genesis chapter 4 and verse 10. Compare Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 24. The word soul is an equivalent expression for life in many places in the scriptures. In Leviticus chapter 17 and verse 11 it states, For the soul of the flesh, or the life of the flesh, is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls, for it is the blood that makes an atonement for the soul. In this place blood represents life or soul. Enoch therefore saw the blood of the slain man which was representative of the life or soul poured out in death. So in Enoch chapter 22 verses 5 to 7 the figure is obviously drawn from Leviticus chapter 17. Enoch chapter 22 and verse 8 At that time therefore I inquired respecting him and respecting the general judgment saying Why is one separated from another? And he answered me and said to me these three places were made in order that they might separate the spirits of the dead, the unredeemed, might be separated from the redeemed, and thus the spirits of the righteous have been separated. This is the spring of water, and on it the light. Luke chapter 16 and verse 26 And besides all this, between us and you there is a great chasm fixed so that those who want to pass from here to you cannot nor can those from there pass to us the passage states that there was a great chasm fixed between Abraham and the rich man yet they could both see and converse with each other see verse 26 is the great chasm to be taken literally? The Gospel of Luke chapter 16 and verse 24 And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. It is not mentioned in the Gospel of Luke where the water comes from, but this could be quoting from the book of Enoch, chapter 22 and verse 9. This is the spring of water, and on it the light. If you were being tormented in flames of fire, as the rich man was, would you request only a drop of water to quench your agony? Would not a jar, or jug, or even a handful of water be more logical? The word for El used here in the book of Enoch is the Hebrew word Shehal. It is equivalent to the Greek word Aedes. That it cannot be concluded from this parable that Aedes itself is a place of blazing fire is made clear at Revelation chapter 20 and verse 14 where death and Aedes are described as being hurled into the lake of fire. The death of the rich man and his being in Hades must therefore be figurative. Figurative death being mentioned elsewhere in the scriptures. Luke chapter 9 and verse 60. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 13. The first letter of Timothy chapter 5 and verse 6. So the fiery torment was experienced while he was figuratively dead but actually alive as a human after a resurrection to judgment, being in torment. The book of Enoch, chapter 22, and verse 10. Likewise, a place has been created for sinners, the unrighteous, when they die and are buried in the earth, and judgment has not come upon them during their life, and they have lived the good life but here their souls will be separated in El in Shehal for after a resurrection to judgment being in torment this great anguish the general concept of judgment with painful consequences at the great day of judgment and punishment and torment 
for those who curse for ever, so that there may be retribution for their souls, and there he, Jesus Christ, will bind them for ever. And this division has been made for the souls of the righteous, those who complain and give information about their destruction, about when they were killed in the days of the sinners. Thus a place has been created for the souls of men who are not righteous but sinners accomplished in wrongdoing and with the wrongdoers will be their lot but their souls will not be killed on the day of judgment nor will they rise from air to be judged with the righteous and the unrighteous. The angel Raphael answered this question in verse 9 above when he says three of the four places have been reserved for the unrighteous and only one place is reserved for the righteous. This is a 3 to 1 ratio which means that out of the over 7 billion people who are alive on the earth today only about 1.75 billion of the people on earth today will enter into the kingdom of heaven to say nothing of the billions who have lived on the earth for the past 6,000 years of generations that have gone before us. Enoch chapter 22 and verse 13 Thus a place has been created for the souls of men who are not righteous but sinners accomplished in wrongdoing and with the wrongdoers will be their lot but their souls that is their life will not be killed on the day of judgment nor will they rise from air to be judged with the righteous and the unrighteous the sinners remain in Shehal forever thus the scriptures speak of the death state into which all go when they depart from among the living while in death they are said to sleep from this sleep some never awake which is equivalent to saying that they are never the subject of resurrection this is evident from Jeremiah chapter 51 and verse 57 where speaking of the princes wise men captains rulers and mighty ones of Babylon the eternal spirit says they shall sleep a perpetual sleep and not wake and Isaiah speaking of the same class says they are dead they shall not live they are deceased they shall not rise Enoch chapter 51 and verse 1 and in those days the earth will return that which has been entrusted to it and Shehal will return that which has been entrusted to it and that which it has received and destruction will return what it owes chapter 56 and verse 8 and in those days Shehal will open its mouth and they will sink into it and their destruction Shehal will swallow up the sinner in the presence of the elect ones and chapter 99 and verse 11 woe to you who extend evil to your neighbours for you will be killed in Shehal Enoch chapter 22 and verse 14 then I blessed the Lord of glory and said blessed are you O Yahweh Lord of righteousness who rules over everything forever